Hello, Salt Strong Nation, Joe Simon, Slick Diamonds. We are back. This is going to be a fun one if you love fishing with weighted hooks. Hooks, hooks, hooks. We talked about doing one on just like all kinds of hooks. We're like, man, we could do an entire podcast just on weighted hooks. If you've been following us for some time, uh, gosh, what was it like three years ago? We really got hot and heavy on this owner twist lock hook. Uh, we probably broke every record for owner in terms of uh, selling one particular uh, skew. And we still use the heck out of those things. But we've also you know, just curious anglers and anglers who can't stop buying stuff and trying new things. We keep finding new and new things uh, that, that will uh, not necessarily replace that original owner twist lock hook, but that complement it. So here is a special guest. I've got my brother, Luke Simons. Like, what's up luke i'm ready to talk way to hooks this is what i use more often than anything else and a special new face first time on the podcast i'm guessing probably not the last our new head of tackle mr justin ritchie what's up dude what's going on guys happy to be here and uh as we've said many times go down the rabbit hole together which is the tackle world and all the different options and uh, rigging scenarios you can get into should be should be good stuff so we we hired justin as our head of tackle for those of you who who follow us you know we have our private insider club and that's where we give 20 percent off everything rods reels line lure hooks and we want to bulk this up big time it's one of our biggest goals is um and last year was just kind of crazy with inventory in general and uh, now we've got someone full-time who's going to be laser focused on it and what I love about you, Justin, is you, you're not just a guy who knows tackle, you know how to fish. What are, what are some, maybe just a handful of things that you've done in the past so people kind of get an idea of, uh, yeah, this guy kind of knows how to catch fish. Ah, uh, man. <laughs> I, I, I like to do a lot of different things. Um, I've spent many years, I mean, over the past 10 or 11 years focusing on redfish and trout and inshore, you know, game fish, but I've always wanted to be a, a breadth of being able to target a lot of different species, not just inshore, but offshore as well. Um, so over the past couple of years, I've done a lot more offshore for kingfish and sailfish and 20 pound tuna and 30 pound amberjack out of a kayak. I like doing everything out of the kayak and I kind of like pushing the limits and, um, you know, making sure I can cross a lot of different species off the list of what I can catch out of a kayak, but I'm doing all of that because I take enjoyment out of being multifaceted. Um, I love fishing shallow this time of the year specifically. I love sight fishing for redfish. Uh, I just put up a post in the in the community page um, this morning, but um, you know, really, I like taking techniques from all over Florida and even sometimes out of state and applying it to areas that people might not use that technique to fish for that species. I always like doing something new and different. I think that that's just what keeps fishing fresh. Yep. And you're going to be a, a huge asset to our company and the insider club. And, uh, and of course, anyone who's buying tackle at fishstrong.com. And you've won a, a few awards and a few trophies in the kayak tournament world. So you're not just someone who loves kayak fishing. You, uh, you've, you've kind of uh, done a few things. Yeah, I've, I've been very fortunate. I'll, I'll, I'll put it at that. Um, I, yeah, I, I used to be a very avid tournament fisherman uh, about five, six years ago, and I still do a few here and there. I think my last one that I did uh, was a Sailfish Smackdown tournament, not the one that just happened this past weekend, the 2021 happened this past weekend, and I couldn't make it down for that one, but the one before I took fifth place out of about 50 competitors, and um, yeah, several first place victories in inshore tournaments, uh, inshore fishing association um, you had kayak fishing classics back in the day, uh, but I'd say the biggest that I, I always think about is um, the short version is I competed in an IFA tournament, Inshore Fishing Association in Jacksonville in 2014, was fortunate to take first place, and it ended up being the qualifier for the Hobie World Championship, um, and only six people in the United States have to win that honor to represent their country and compete against uh, 50 other competitors across the world. We competed in Amsterdam uh, in 2014, and I was still able to take fourth place out of 50 competitors catching 
Pike and Perch and Xander, which is like a, a walleye on steroids. Zoolander? I mean, you say Zoolander? Zoolander. <laughs> <laughs> the Xander. That's I've awesome. never heard of a Xander. You got to pull that one up and look at that later. That's a, I mean, it's a, it's a walleye, but it's massive. And um, yeah, I mean, I took things that I learned on how to fish for redfish and applied it to fishing for pike in 10 feet of water that's crystal clear with stocky, like, kelp like grass so i mean it i really think that the things that you learn from fishing for so many different species can help cross over into any other venture um i mean you, people that fish for triple tail might take the same technique to fish for trout in six feet of water you can just find all the little nuances and, and roll them all over and mix them up and it's just uh it's more things to keep in your back pocket so yep love it so before we get on to the weighted hooks conversation what country at the at the world's was the worst? You know, like for many years, Jamaican bobsled team, kind of a joke. They finally did, you know, get their act together. But who, is there a country that's just like, man, why do you guys even show up? Oh, uh, I don't think the Aussies want me to come out and say that. Like <laughs> the Aussies know how to have a good time and they're, they're so much fun and they're always full of energy. But overseas, the view of competitive kayak fishing and tournament fishing is not the same. Um, at least back then, six years ago, seven years ago, people that were, were getting into kayak fishing and they were enjoying the sport, but the competitive nature, the Americans would come over and they're like, rock on, man, 110%. We're going to go until we pass out. We're going to give it all of our effort. We're going we're gonna to beat everybody to the spot. And the guys in the Netherlands were like, yeah, we're, we're going to pedal over to the this, spots this and we're going to fish and, and we'll see what happens. And it, it, the, the mentalities are different. Uh, the Aussies were awesome. They actually were really competitive, but uh, they, they partied pretty hard too. Oh, so, the, v, uh, the VB, they got too much Victoria better. I, I spent yeah. some time down there and <laughs> had, had gotten some VBs. That's pretty funny. Cool. Well, um, yeah. I know we got a couple of Aussie listeners. So uh, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, a couple of you guys. I apologize in advance. We still love you. All right. So let's get into <laughs> weighted, weighted hooks. So how do you guys want to break this down luke do you guys want to go because a lot of it's going to depend on the brand too right like z-man you might use a slightly different uh weighted hook how do you guys want to start yeah we'll start we'll start with the the owner twist lock so this is the one that that we really started with and, and this is this is what i personally had my best growth with um in the transition from bass fishing to inshore saltwater bass fishing i used to always use the the, the worm hook which i unfortunately don't have one your handy but a worm hook which is unweighted and unless you rig it perfectly it has a, a liability to spin and this this is the, the to the core purpose of, of weighted hooks and, and it's also what kind of started the basics so the general purpose of the weighted hook here's one that's rigged up is that just having the weight does multiple things first of all you can cast it further which is a, which is a benefit also you can run it a little bit deeper but most importantly or i would say just as importantly is that it's a, basically a keel so it's a keel that as you're working the bait, it can do, do like an underwater to walk the dog. You can do some good dart action and it's not going to be helicoptering. Even if you don't rig it perfectly, if you don't have it perfectly symmetrical, um, it'll still work. It gives you a lot more room for air. And so for that reason, weighted hooks are extremely important. And that looks like a one eighth. This is a one eighth size weight, right? right? So they have smaller ones. So here's, Somewhere in here is a 1 16th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here's a 1 16th up top. This next one's a 1 8th. And then they have some bigger ones. Some bigger ones that just came out with the 3 16th, big, big boy. And then some are even a quarter ounce. Now they're starting to make some new ones. Um, weighted hooks are starting to get more popular. So now this is a, a quarter ounce on a weighted hook. And so so that's just the overall premise on, on weighted hooks. And, and Justin, you use the twist locks too? In some yeah. Capacity? I yeah, for sure. Uh, most of the time, I mean, I'm just thinking of right now for the next couple months when it's cold, I'm, I'm pretty key on that little 16th ounce three odd, uh, and, and smaller presentations, uh, the majority of the time. Um, I, and really whether it's a shrimp presentation or a jerk bait presentation, like you had, um, or even, uh, like a really small stick bait. So an example that I have, this one's rigged on a, on a jig head, but um, you know, Mary Lure makes a little John and this one is I think kind of a gold flash color. Uh, I actually really like the black and gold or the golden brim color, darker colors. 
I'll take that 16th ounce uh, three aught and just, you know, take my same presentation I'd use throughout the majority of spring and summer and fall. And I just downsize just a little bit. Um, I'm always wanting a softer landing, a slower moving lure. Generally speaking, when it's colder, that's, I want to slow down my presentation a lot. And uh, not only does it land softly, but I'll be able to work through the grass or work in between the mangroves and stay in the strike zone just a little bit longer, giving the fish a better, more time to decide whether they want to, you know, jump on it or not. Um, I mean, that's, I always have, if I take two or three rods, this is all, I'm always going to have at least one rod rigged up with a three sixteenths, uh, three odd sixteenth ounce. Um, and then after that, yeah, I mean, I think you had a, there's all kinds of sizes. Um, you pointed out that five odd quarter and something a little bit different that uh, I think people should consider is when fishing for big trout. So big trout this time of the year, you've, everyone's fishing finesse. I, I fish finesse a lot of the time, but I'll, one thing I've had a lot of success on is throwing a larger bait like the bomber and running that bigger hook and that bigger weight, you're not necessarily trying to work it faster, but you're trying to get it a little bit lower in the water column and it helps you fish a little bit deeper water and do what we call slow rolling, just getting a bait really, really far downwind, covering as much water as possible slowly, and you're gonna get down just a little bit deeper with that five aught quarter. And it's a bigger hook, it's a bigger weight, so a bigger presentation, the bigger trout are gonna key in on you know, if they're not going to eat often, they're probably only going to eat one or two big meals. This is the big meal. So um, you're right, really choosing that, that length, the, the weight to match with the type of lure that you're going to go with is, is key. Yeah, and, and, and as you'll, I guess if you go to any store, there's a bunch of options. And we've, you know, we've so far just touched on this one. And the reason yeah. for, at least in my opinion, is this one, it's just unique in the fact that it, it's easy to rig with most brands of lures. And so we'll talk about some, like Zeman in particular is one that can be really frustrating on this hook. Mm -hmm. So we will never say there's a one size fits all. You have to get this hook and, and you're going to be uh, catching fish every trip and love life. Um, Z-Man makes it really, it's really tough with Z-Mans, but the reason why it's bet is good for most saw plastics, even gulps. So like in this small hook to like, to Justin's point in sight fishing, even a gulp shrimp, like a little three inch gulp shrimp rigged on this can be excellent for sight fishing. Um, it, again, same for the same premise. It's easy to rig. The cool thing, the unique thing about it is I'm trying to get a good, okay. It looks like over my beard is a good spot, but this little, uh, this little pin, it's called a grip pin. And the, the reason why it's unique is that this little pin here is a centering pin. And so you get it right on the head of the, of the bait and you can just twist it on and it's super easy, right? It guarantees you just get it right at the top of the bait, twist it on and it guarantees that it's going to get on there properly. It's not going to be kinked over and, uh, and it just makes rigging easier. And so, but the other ones, right? There's uh, like Gamagatsu makes some good ones. Um, theirs have a little bit wider gap. So if you're using a thicker bait, you might even want to go, or you probably should go to a wider gap hook. Let me just go ahead and rig this so you can see. There's not much gap on the, and this is a pretty thin jerk bait and there's really not much gap there. So if you're using thicker baits, right? A bait uh, with a bigger profile, um, you'll need to get a bigger hook, either a wider gap or just get an overall bigger hook. So Justin, what, what do you recommend as far as the, in, in that realm? So I think you had a grip pin down there. Yeah, uh, that was one that, you know, we were looking at it's, it's caught my eye, especially with that uh, very elastic style of plastic, whether it's Z-Man or, um, or a new lure, which I know we're going to, we're going to bring up and talk about, but. Uh, pa power uh, prawn. Uh -oh. <laughs> so cat's out of the bag. Uh, I'm actually, a, I do really like these grip pins a lot. So there are ways you can use a twist lock. And, and who that. makes those for the, for the person who's listening? This is new to them. Who makes? Uh... So this particular one, this is a Mustad grip pin. This is a four aught eighth ounce option. I think that's a good all around overall size. And they can make a little bit bigger hook, a little bit lighter weight or a little bit heavier weight. Um, but generally speaking, now, again, I'm, I'm just relating everything to winter time because that's kind of what we're focused on over the next couple months. Um, an eighth ounce, even with a more durable plastic like Z-Man or Elastec, uh, will be enough to get that bait down slowly and have a much more subtle presentation. So I'm going to pull it up and show everybody. Ta-da! 
the power prawn. This thing is awesome. Like I can't, I can't stop playing with it and pulling the tail and and uh, rigging it a bunch of different ways, and including the you know the jig heads that come with it. This is going to be an awesome, awesome lure. I mean, really, I wish, I wish I had had this in other tournaments in the past. This is this is a. It would have been it would have been unfair. Yeah, it would have been I mean, fair. Really, like gotta give give the fish, you got to give the fish a chance. We we can't cut all the corners, right? <laughs> Um, so what I did with this one is I took the Mustad grip pin. I took that four aught eighth ounce. And what, what Luke's talking about is, yeah, with, with this type of plastic, that's very, very stretchy and very durable. It can be tough to rig an owner twist lock with this kind of plastic, not impossible, but all things considered with rigging, it's going to end up being a little bit easier. If you're going to want to go with a weedless presentation like this, show the tail on there too. We actually uh, found that rigging it uh, in reverse it can be easier. And, and by that, I mean this. So you have it, you can see it set up and in the body right now, but I'm gonna take it off. It's not tied to anything. There's this little chin lock. There's this pin here at the top. And really what that's meant to do is to help make sure this kind of material doesn't slide back off the hook. Um, what we have found, or at least what I do, and I know a couple of the guys have done, you take the hook and you kind of preset a hole backwards. So I'm trying to see if I can get it to so, hang. So, and, and a lot of people are listening. Try to uh, uh, explain this, like where you're hooking it. What what part of the of basically the a pilot hole? So it's a pilot hole yeah. for the, the top quarter inch where you uh, can put that yeah put the extra like, through. For the shrimp, for example, for the power prawn, you take the prawn. And I would like to go up underneath the basically the chin or underneath the neck of, of that shrimp and go and I would preset this pilot hole on the underside and I would get it to want to run through and then up through the head. So you kind of can see, let me see if I get the point in there. See that point, it's coming up and through. And really all I'm doing that for is to create that hole. You won't really see it on the plastic, but when you pop it back off and you take the hook, you have not tied this onto your leader and onto your setup yet. You can find that opening and you can get it into the opening like so. It's very, very small because that material is super durable. And then you can rig it weedless and off you go. Seconds. In seconds. <laughs> and see, yeah, really. I mean, I'm, I'm taking my time to make sure it looks really nice and, you know, take that extra effort. But yeah, get it, go hit some docks, go hit the grass flats, go hit the edge of mangroves. Um, you'll see in one of the insider reports of some success I've had uh, on a shrimp presentation really tight to mangroves and in cold water, you know, when these fish are sluggish and are just looking for an easy meal. You're going to prevent snagging. You're going to be able to keep this with this type of hook. Again, this is a mustad uh, grip pin. And you're going to be able to um, keep, that on, keep that bait on the hook a lot longer and still be able to fish in pretty heavy structure. Yeah, and so there's and there's two types. So I have one of those two. This this is a grip pin, and that's from Mustad. And Z-Man recently came out with a similar hook. It's the same premise, and it's called the chin lock. You you mentioned that term. So that's yeah. uh, there's two different hooks that are pretty much doing the same thing. Where the keeper, instead of being the little corkscrew that owner and Gamagatsu seem to have, um, those two have this little ridge, and so the the ridge type is better for um, the, the more unique soft plastics that are, that are the extra durable, where you can put a lot of force to them, like Z-Man, where you can, you can totally just, it's crazy how strong they are, where you, they're, and they're, but they're very flexible and malleable. So you can just kind of rip it over the top. Malleable? We promise there's going to be no big words on this no. podcast. <laughs> it, just, it just came to mind. It might, not, it might not even be a word. I don't know. It just came to mind. But, uh, but so for the Z-Man material, you can actually power it over the over this little um, this little gadget, the the little keeper. Um, but with the power prawn, it's a much more dense material, and so as as Justin was saying, it, you have, you pretty much have to poke the eye through it because getting that material over the weight and, and most importantly, this little keeper thing can be tough. Um, the con though with this is when using like a DOA or or a traditional soft plastic or like a zoom like you know like a zoom mm -hmm. uh, that, that are kind of a softer material and as you go over this keeper it tears it so it can it can create a tear and that can that can hurt the the um the amount of fish you know you can catch per bait so on those that's when the twist lock is good because that corkscrew 
slides right in there without tearing. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so that's why kind of there, there's never a one size fits all. It's really kind of based on personal preference as well as the type of soft plastic. What, what are your thoughts on the owner twist lock in terms of their centering pin and the Gamagatsu? I, I found personally over this whole last year with COVID and owner was sold out for the longest time. And I was just trying a lot of stuff and I tried some cheap knockoffs. And to me, it was night and day difference. Like you would think how much can really go into one of these pins. I don't know what owner does, but it was just so much easier to keep it centered, to go in like seamlessly. It was like they had a razor blade at the end of it. Uh, some of them were just like, I mean, it was like, oh my gosh, this hook is horrible. What are your thoughts on, on, on what are they doing differently? They have a patent on, on it's on part of it on the twist lock piece or whatever they're doing, right? Yeah, they have a patent on that centering pin. So that's, right, the only that's what it is. Yeah. Let's see if I can get it up close. And uh, there's like a little. Dude, don't no, get it too close to your go. camera. It's going to, it'll scrape that thing permanently. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. It's razor sharp. Like diamond. Uh, Woo. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's all that it is. It's just like a little needle that sticks out. And it doesn't just help you guide it and get it on straight. Um, the whole process, because it's running through the center of that screw, is, is just going to help make sure that it stays on a little bit better. Um, really, it's meant so that it can go on straight and it can continue to thread on a lot easier than just catching the first loop of that spring. There's always a loop that some other, uh, you know, twist, twist locks or, or, or springs here on, on other manufacturers, they don't have that centering pin on there. And that does make a big difference. It's a lot easier. So what, what about like Gamagatsu? What, what do, you, do you use? Because I've just... I've found like, as soon as owner came back and I saw we had a big order of owners come back in, I'm like, dude, I'm going back to that. That's all yeah. I want to use. Yeah, I, I have used uh, Gamakatsu. They make like a super line extra wide gap with that keel weighted and the spring on there. Um, I found that the weights on the Gamakatsu, uh, basically the swim bait hooks, the weighted hooks, uh, they're great for bigger presentations. They're, they're fine for like the bomber. The bomber, I think would be an awesome option. Working deeper water with, uh, you know, with the Alabama Leprechaun. This one's on an unweighted extra wide gap. But um, I, I found that the Gamakatsu ones, the weights are just a little bit bigger. They cover a lot more of the shank of the hook. And it really it's better if I'm gonna work deeper water or I'm gonna slow roll a paddle tail or cover a lot of water, but they don't land as softly um, as a twist lock because the weights are much, much smaller. They're, they're compact in a little area on the hook. Um, it really does affect the action overall, especially how you twitch it and you dart a lure. Uh, when you have weight distributed throughout the base of the hook, if, if the weight was all the way back here and evenly distributed, the hook's gonna, the lure is gonna naturally wanna go up and down. It's not gonna have as much tendency to dart left and right as you work it. Um, so that's kind of why I've always found that like traditional swim bait hooks, I mean, the original keel weighted hook, uh, the name escapes me right now, but I mean, 10 years ago, 10 plus years ago, you would buy just a, like a keel weighted hook and it wouldn't have a spring on it. And you'd have to wet the, wet the weight and slide the whole weight and everything through the soft plastic. And they still make those, uh, today, but I mean, as Luke pointed out that, all of that weight stretched out on a hook, it's going to eventually tear up a traditional plastic. And um, that's why, you know, this, this really is just going to preserve your lures that much longer. So, I mean, really, I, I, I don't know, it could be personal preference. It sounds like you guys also are big fans. I'm a huge fan. Like, I, I love that. I love this product. Uh, but about owner, about owner in particular? Yeah, okay. Owner twist lock specifically. I mean, two or three different sizes for different presentations, but owner twist lock is, is always on the boat with me. Yeah, and here's here's the first weighted hook I ever got. Oh, so yeah. smokes, went, dude! Yeah, went through, OG right there. They called it the, yeah. su the submarine. Yeah, I, I don't know who. I can't remember who made it. I just I just have them. I have them in my old tackle uh, tackle storage area, and and you can see that this it's come a long way. So this is a really big weight, as Justin said. This it's a very long weight. It covers a lot of area. This totally wrecks almost all the soft plastics I rigged on it because I would thread it on, right? <laughs> and then taking this giant, taking the soft plastic over this giant weight, if it's not like a Z-Man, it's gonna get wrecked. Um, the weight and the, this, there's no keeper on the top. You can see that it's basically, it doesn't even go out. It's If it was a more than 90 degree, it could actually hold it itself. 
but once you get on there, you're tearing a hole and then there doesn't have, there's not much to even hold it on. So this was a, a cool because it was the start of this, but what we have now with the twist locks, the grip pins, the chin locks, it's a night and day difference compared to the originals. So I just wanted to show the difference. I'm shocked they don't yeah. sell it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a solid antique, product. Antique store. Yes. So <laughs> let, let's take a, a, a kind of more of a step back. Uh, I'm trying to put myself in the listener's shoes because I know I've heard this question before when someone would say with soft plastics, why, why not just use a jig head? Like why even have a weighted hook at, at all? I know you've touched on a couple of them. Talk about all the, all the reasons that you would use any type of weighted hook over a jig head. Cause there's some guys and gals that have never used a hook like this and 100% mm -hmm. of, of, of their tackle bag or trays is just jig heads. Uh, yeah, guys, okay. Here you go. Yeah. I'll, I'll say just weedless to be weedless is the, is the well, what, I, I can get a weedless jig head though. I'm just playing devil's um, advocate here. Yeah, I mean, but it's, it's weedless in shallow water. It's like if I need to do both of those, I'm always using a weighted hook because the weighted hook, right, as far as the 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 fall, right, this weighted hook, the, the jig head, the weight is at the very front, and so it's going to fall a lot faster. So if you're trying to sight fish in 12 inches of water with seagrass, you're not going to do so well with the jig head because it's going to be immediately down in the grass and Whereas with, this can ride on top of it. And with owner, you can shift that little thing around. The little yeah, way. that's what I was, I was just doing. So with okay. owner, they don't think they made it on purpose, but after you catch a few fish, the glue in there kind of separates and you can actually shift it back and forward a little bit. Yeah. Again, another, another benefit. But yeah, the, the traditional reason for weighted hooks is that you can do finesse fishing while being weedless um, and to cover just to cover the shallow water a little bit better. Whereas the jig head, you're going to be down in there. Um, it just sinks faster, which in some cases is better. Oh, we have a, actually a fourth guest here, Otis. He's oh, no, Otis, <laughs> Otis, 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 in the corner. But also too on that uh, playing devil's advocate side of the hey, I could get a jig headless weedless. I feel like I don't get the same type of hookup ratio when I'm using you know a little weedless jig head with a big old. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think that the gap is is different on a jig head. When you have, uh, like, we're just going to keep talking about the, the twist lock for now, the gap difference between tip and the base here of your hook is, is bigger than, than jig heads. Like, I mean, Mission Fishing is great and short with that boxing style glove. Um, great for smaller lures like paddle tails and, again, the, the mirror lure Little John that I was showing. But when you get a solid hook set on a fish uh, with a weedless presentation, and you lock that hook in that there's a bigger gap on these on these weedless hook options and you're just going to stay connected that much better um plus the hook shank's going to go a little bit further back on the lure so if you do get a big fish if you get a big trout that's wary and they follow and or if you get a redfish that's chasing a lure and they short strike a bait you're gonna have a better chance of hooking up with a little bit longer shank on you know on a, on a weedless hook than you will on a jig head that, that you're gonna have to engulf the whole thing to be able to get it especially if you put a jig head on a, you know, five inch plastic. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, was gonna, I, was say, I have one of these weedless hooks just so, weedless oh, jig head just so somebody can see what he's talking about. And sometimes th these are the, for those listening, these are the jig heads that have that metal, um, the metal little offshoot that, that you hook up under the, the hook, the, uh, sorry, the, the tip of the hook. And when a fish bites it, it, it unleashes. Um, this can sometimes get stuck. Like sometimes it'll actually get stuck around the um, the barb, and then no matter what you do, it's stuck on there. Sometimes it's just um, you know. Based long story short, this this metal device can can definitely impact your hookup ratio. It's worth it if you need to get deep and be weedless. It's worth it because you're not going to be retying rigs and getting snagged. But uh, but yeah, if you can, the weighted hook would be the better solution for being weedless as long yeah. as you've gone deep enough. Justin, what you about to yeah. say something? Luke rudely interrupted you. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I learned how to sight fish redfish in really rich, thick, lush grass over in Mosquito Lagoon. This was 
Uh, this was a while back, and I know the lagoon's not in as, as great a shape as it had been, but there was a time not long ago when the grass was so thick that it would come up to the surface and it would fold over the top and it would just, you know, the shoots would run a good two or three feet out. It was an absolute jungle. There was no way, I think even with a weedless uh, jig head that I would have been able to fish for these, these reds that were milling through the jungle of the grass. It was so, so thick. The only way you could have been able to get to them was with a weedless presentation. And the grass was so thick that even a weedless presentation without a weight on it, I couldn't punch through that grass. Um, so I needed to get something that would get down through the grass and through the little crevices. But, uh, you know, the minute I would twitch a lure, if it didn't have a weight on it, it would just jump right back out of the grass. This, I could get it buried down a little bit. And I'd play with the weight sizes, you know, sometimes a 16 pounds if I'm really shallow, but an eighth ounce was good most of the time. Um, and, uh, and I lost my train of thought, <laughs> but I've always stuck with weedless. Um, I, I think now I'm actually playing more with jig heads because I spent so much time fishing with weedless hooks that I kind of want to figure out um, when I can use a jig head, when is it going to outperform a weedless presentation, but, but I've spent so long using this type of setup and being successful with it that, you know, it come natural at this point. Luke, you made a good point that um, this is a 16 ounce weedless hook. And if you put it on a regular plastic, you put it on a Slam Shady 2.0 and you throw it out and you watch it sink, you can take a 16 ounce jig head and put it on that plastic and the jig head's going to sink faster, even though it's the same weight for that hook. Um, it's just the way that it's designed. That, that weight on a jig head is on the front part of that lure. It's going to sink nose down and it's going to cut through the water much faster as opposed to something that's going to be a little more centered when it sinks. It won't sink as nose down, so it's going to catch more water on it sinks. It's going to waft, if you will. There's your $5 word, wafting. <laughs> it's going to float through the water a little bit better than nose diving down with a jig head. Um, and now I'm just I'm thinking, since we're just spitballing all these ideas, a weedless jig head on a Slam Shady or, or a shrimp presentation bounced in a little bit deeper water, like those three and five foot potholes. You know, a weedless presentation or a regular jig head is fine. Sometimes a jig head gets down really fast, but you can snag grass. A weedless presentation will get down, but it'll take a lot longer to fish those deeper potholes with weedless. You can kind of get the best of both worlds on a weedless jig head in deeper water. It really makes a lot of sense. That's something that, you know, I'm not sure if a lot of people have thought about rigging it or presenting it that way. Um, I'm, I'm definitely going to try it. So, yeah, um, still siding for this. I think the other big reason is uh, not just grass, but any structure. If I'm going to skip underneath a dock, I mean, Luke, you do a lot of dock fishing. And, uh, yeah, a, a, jig head's, a jig head's great for short strikes. And sometimes a jig head for presenting certain lures is, is appropriate, like the power prawn. Those jig heads are, are rigged perfectly in most scenarios on the power prod. Um, but if you did want to get up into some pretty dicey areas underneath docks or in between a mangrove labyrinth and you just want to position a cast just right, you're not going to snag as lightly uh, with, a, with a weedless presentation than you will with, with a jig head. And you're not going to have what I found, and I'm not the best dock skipper, as many of my videos will prove but I'm constantly trying to get better. But when I use that weed guard, whatever you got, whatever we're calling it on the weedless jig head, I found not every time, but when I get an aggressive dock skip, the little thing sets or whatever you want to call it, it, it falls out. And all of a sudden I'm not weedless anymore. Whereas yeah. if I skipped a little Alabama leprechaun or something underneath mangroves, rarely is that hook coming out and getting exposed. I've, it's happened to me so many times. Once again, I'm kind of like that kid, you know, when you, you know, kids were skipping rocks in the pond and some kids like Luke was just very finesse and I'm just like hook, like hit. And all of a sudden it's just this massive, like a bowling ball going in the water. So it's part of my problem. Uh, <laughs> but I know I'm not the only one suffering from that. And so I have, I have had many issues where it started off weedless in my cast and just from the cast alone, how it hit the water and tumbled uh, all of a sudden that thing got completely unweedless and now i'm hooking the first thing that it comes up to which is not a fish it's a log or a cast net rope or it, any of the million things that i've hooked underwater yeah that's uh, that's true and one i think before we and i were getting close to the end time uh, i want to introduce mm -hmm. so this is um, yeah. 
can kind of be a weighted hook, right? This is basically a blend between a weighted hook and a jig. So it's basically a worm hook, right? That has the same device that we talked about, that little uh, um, keeper, what, what we, what's the term for it, Justin? Uh, we've got grip pin, we've got chin locks. We've worm, got, worm, I mean, Hollywood calls it a worm keeper. That's a worm keeper. Yeah, yeah, a worm worm keeper. Keeper. <laughs> yeah so whatever you want to call it, but it's that, it's that ridge on the, on the top bend of a, of a traditional worm hook that, that keeps you know, soft plastics on there, but you have it mounted on a swinging jig head. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a blend. And this is, I've been testing out and I've seen the pros and the cons, but to, to Justin's point where you can, you can have a weedless setup, right? You can have a weedless setup with this. Let me just go ahead and rig it up. And who, who makes it real quick for those that's, listening? That's a Texas or a Z-Man. It's called the Texas Eye Jig Head. Yeah. So you rig this puppy up and you basically get a weedless rig that has, it's front weighted, right? Because it's essentially a jig head on there. But since it's a worm hook, you're actually pretty weedless. Um, I see your so, hands. Yeah, right here. Sorry, I was yeah. rigging. I want to make sure that I, just like that. I want to make sure it's nice and pretty. So, uh, so right, now right. we have slam shady. Look at so that now we have a weedless slam shady rig. Mm -hmm. So I thought this would be awesome. I thought this was the answer to uh, to dock fishing, um, but this thing is terrible at skipping. It's, it's a really bad skipper because this thing wobbles and it's, it's very rare that it hits nice and flat without something causing, uh, causing a skipping trouble. So still for dock fishing, the, the weighted hook, or sorry, the, the weedless jig head is, is the better option, at least so far from what I've seen. But for buzzing over oyster bars, or buzzing along the edges of mangroves, or even on the edges of docks, this is awesome. What about now the, I mean, the, like the owner, you said getting into the one fourth ounce um, twist lock. I mean, that's, have you tried that for some of the docks? I haven't yet, but I mean, it's so heavy that I, I have to imagine the skipping is going to be tough. Justin, have you, have you tried, have you been skipping with these, these heavier ones? No, I've not skipped docks, but I have worked deeper potholes with, with that five out quarter in the past. Um, usually when I'm praying for for a, a trout bite in a tournament and I, and I'm over grass, I just head out deep and try to find a 20 inch or bigger fish. Um, but yeah, I would, I would agree with you on that. I think that quarter might, uh, might be tough to skip docks, but again, uh, not all docks are, I mean, not all the dock fishing scenarios are the same. You might have an area where there's a little bit faster current or a little bit deeper water and you need to compensate with that. It, there's so many scenarios there really are and that's why it's tough that's why the expression taking the whole everything in the kitchen sink with you is very true you know um but fortunately you know the, with the owner twist lock variety and really even all the other weighted varieties we talked about today um z-man's chin locks the the grip pins the must add grip pins there's there's only three or four weighted sizes so, so it's not that many options to take out there with you. And, and really, they all serve their own purpose. It really depends on the presentation, the size, the material, and where you're fishing. So I know there's a lot of options, but I mean, we, we really tried to be all encompassing here and make sure that we present people with a lot of different tools, if you will, to be successful. Um, and I mean, I, I have you know, two or three quantity of each of these brand hooks with me on the water. Luke, I know you do too, because you need to be able to mix it up to get that bite. And, you know, you don't know when you're going to need those things. Yeah. And, and the depth coverage, as we, we preach it all the time, but I, I'll just say it again, because it's so important is depth coverage is crucial. And, and so regardless of which one you go with, it's very important to have a 16th an eighth, and then maybe one even bigger, if like a, like a quarter or three sixteenths. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's a big difference. Even if you, even if it's a six inch running depth difference, that can be the, that can be a world of difference, particularly in the winter time when the fish are not going to be moving very far. Um, so regardless of which one to go for, make sure you have a, a variety of different weight options. I always carry more weight options than I do really anything else. So I'm like my, my tackle tray on jig heads is by far the most populated thing in my, in my tackle box. Good. And the best news is we have all this for you to purchase right now here today at fishstrong.com. That's our online tackle store, fishstrong, 
Club.com. And of course, all Insider Club members get 20% off everything, the whole kit and caboodle. And we even now have some proprietary products that you can only get as an Insider member, like the Power Prawn. And we are testing out a few new uh, weighted hooks and some weedless hooks. Uh, I, I have to imagine probably in the next couple of weeks, we'll do another uh, podcast uh, on that. And um, the reason we're not going to talk too much about it is we like to test stuff. We, we want to still be known as the consumer reports of, of saltwater fishing. So we're out there testing this stuff. I know, uh, you know, Justin, now that he is full time with us, I don't know if I made that clear earlier, but yeah, he's full time with us. Uh, he's brought some ideas too from his tournament days of say, Hey, like this worked in this scenario. So, uh, and especially for someone who's getting to travel and has traveled in a lot of different places. Uh, it's, it's cool to see what works and, and what works in certain scenarios. So we're gonna come up with some really, really neat stuff. We'll have a whole lot more on the, the power prawn. If you haven't gotten yours as an insider member, uh, no, I know we did run out pretty quickly and we have more coming. Uh, so that is the, the great news. We have a lot more coming and we're going to have some weedless, uh, rigs as well. Those will be custom only for insider members that we didn't even discuss uh, here on this uh, this podcast. So uh, check all that at fishdraw.com and join us in the insider club if you haven't already. If you like this free stuff, wait till you see what you get as an insider member. This is just the very, very tip of the iceberg. Uh, you can go there at saltstrong.com forward slash pricing or just go to saltstrong.com and you'll see a join the club. And you'll see exactly what you get as a member on top of the discounts, on top of the private community and all the on the water how to tips. And Luke does a, a really amazing weekend game plan where every single Friday we uh, we basically curate the entire community of now almost 20,000 members of all the fishing reports going on from Texas up to Virginia, really New Jersey now. And in 10 minutes or less, curate exactly the where you should be fishing, like the type of spots, type of depth, type of lures, type of rigs, type of live bait. And, and just kind of like simplify it for you, right? I mean, it's just the ultimate shortcut, like having a guide tell you, here's the exact types of spots you should fish, fish based on what's happening right now. All based on trends, not just based on, hey, I like this color because it's uh, it's based on what's really working right now. Anything else? I know it was a mouthful there. Yeah, well, the club, yeah, if you haven't joined the club, I mean, just give it a shot. There's there's no risk to you. It's a 100% satisfaction guarantee. It's actually a 200%. Satisfaction yeah, dude, guarantee. Justin yeah. saw that. He yesterday. That's wild. Yeah, he, this it's is so his wild. first. This is his first week. He's like, you serious? Like you guys have a 200%? I was like, yeah. Like if someone stays in it a year and like actually gives it a shot, and if you feel like it wasted your time, we'll not only give you your money back, we'll double it. Uh, it's like we're that because we've seen what happens. We know once people actually take the small leap of faith because it is risk free and just get in there and and do it. And we've had full time guides. Who, who keep renewing their membership saying like, this is so well worth it, not just for the discounts because they're learning stuff. Uh, even from some of our members, like the whole power prawn thing came from a member mm -hmm. who's winning crazy amounts of money in like tournaments in Brazil. And now in Florida, we're like, all right, we got to kind of like look at this thing. And lo and behold, it's worked everywhere we've taken it. So um, yeah, you just never know what you learn in fishing. That's the cool part. Absolutely. So yeah, get in there, give it a shot. Uh, you are going to love it. Uh, I learned uh, it's well worth it for me. Like I learned every single year, I learned some amazing, again, like the power prawn was, I'd say the biggest one from last year. And then the, 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 the crab lures the year before all, all that was from insider community posts. Um, it's just amazing having a net, a large network of, of anglers who are actually willing and, and enjoy helping others. Mm -hmm. everybody gets better yeah and that's that's why we put such a big guarantee on it and now we have mr justin in there so make sure when you are in the community follow him you can follow people uh inside the private community and uh, make sure you follow him his uh his reports are phenomenal so we're very very glad to have you on board justin and um everyone definitely let us know what kind of questions you want we'll clearly be doing a lot of kayak fishing tips uh with him and and, and tony combined i and, and wide obviously of uh, of course uh, it is going to be one, two, three punch. So uh, pumped about this uh, this year. A lot of great content coming for Insider members. And uh, guys, we appreciate you so much. Any questions, make sure to go to saltstrong.com. Ask them in the community. And obviously on every blog post, we'll have an area at the very bottom where you can leave a comment and we will get to it. So guys, appreciate you. Uh, go out and buy some weighted hooks right now at fishstrong.com. We out. Peace. See ya. <laughs>